uh, of uh, uh, our, our committee, our, our economic planning committee. Uh, uh, maybe as a starting point, we can uh, maybe just start with the Pledge of Allegiance. In terms of the general format uh, today, we're, we're basically uh, uh, going to enable, uh, in terms of questions, uh, we'll, we'll utilize our, our, the basic rules that we utilize here in Warren County, and that is that uh, standing members of the committee will get first crack at, at the situation, followed by other supervisors, followed by you know members from Washington County and. Uh, and, and, and other participants. Uh, maybe to start first, maybe we could have everyone maybe introduce themselves and, and just go around the room. Craig Leggett, Supervisor, Town of Chester. Claudia Bramer from Glen Falls. Bill Loeb, Glen Falls. Pat Simpson, Town of Oregon. Andrea Hogan, Town of Perth. John Strau, Queensbury. Mike Wild, Queensbury. Uh, Doug Beatty, Queensbury. Frank Thomas, Stony Creek. Kevin Garrity, Warrensburg. Table, <laughs> Brian Hanson. Bob Pink, Chicago. Dana Half, Hartford. Christopher Bolt, Washington County. Aaron Frank, South Center, and I'm on Fall Transportation Company. Thank you. Ben Bristol, Fun Fall. Ronald Moss, Warren County Planning. Chad Estuggan, Pink Point. Mike Swan, Warren County Treasurer. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you, Walter, for uh, for your attendance today, and uh, hopefully we'll you'll have an opportunity to uh, answer some questions and you know put some light on some issues that uh, I think you know some people have uh, have been asking. Uh, the uh, the members that will have I, I think the first crack at the. Uh, in terms of the uh, information gathering process here will be um, we have maybe we can just go from right to left and, and maybe start with uh, Supervisor Leggett. Well I, I just like that is there a printed agenda? There is not no. Okay. Uh, do we have a stated purpose and outcome for this meeting? I, I think this at, at this point is an information gathering uh, effort uh, probably to be followed by subsequent meetings but I, I think uh, uh, our stated objective today would be to uh, uh, to get a some more knowledge as it relates to uh, outst outstanding loans in the par portfolio and and have uh, Walter and his auditor better explain uh, uh, the mission and goal of his organization. Thank you, Chairman. Supervisor Leggett, do you have any questions? Supervisor Bramer. Thank you. I'd like to know if Mr. Young brought any handouts for us, including the loan aging report that we had requested at a prior meeting. Mr. Young, would you be kind enough to would you be kind enough to maybe get the podium here? I think it would be easier for all concerned uh, to uh, to hear what you have to say. Thank you. <coughs> Walter, if you would prefer to sit, you can sit at one of these desks. Whatever makes you feel most comfortable. Okay. Did you have any opening comments, Walter, or you just want to take questions? I'll take questions. Questions? Uh, Supervisor Bramer, no. Uh, Supervisor Simpson. I just any? wanted to uh, make note, too, that the, uh, our regular accountants from Snow White and Ferrara are here, as well as the people from Marvin and Company who, who are in the audience. Great. And I, I would uh, welcome you gentlemen to, to our meeting, and uh, if you feel comfortable at some point, coming up to the podium if there's a need uh, to put some flavor on that just feel free to do that uh, 
Supervisor Bramer. Thanks. Before you pass over me, quick, um, I, I will look over this report. I guess one of my main questions is, what is the default rate and how much money has been written off in the loans over the last amount of time? I don't know. This looks like it's... Maybe someone can tell me. These are current These are the current, current outstanding loans. So Carl, could probably answer that question from me. Why don't you come up to the podium, sir, and that would probably be easier for... Uh, I, I think it has been reported in the press uh, a, a, a rather high number, okay? So I, maybe you can put some flavor and some... Well, Mr. Young has also reported other numbers, so I'm, I'm just trying to get... Okay, yeah, good. Okay, I'll just refer to the 2016 uh, audited financial report. You know, of course, the organization operates a revolving loan fund. Um, organizations, you know, submit applications that go through a you know, vetting process within the uh, planning board, and if the loan is deemed worthy enough, they do make the loan. At the end of 2016, there was approximately $2.8 million loans outstanding. And for the year ended um, uh, December 31st, 2016, they wrote off a total of $65,000. So what that means is, in previous years, they had issued a loan out to an organization and for whatever reason, uh, the uh, organization went out of business, defaulted on the loan, and there was, after repeated attempts of obtaining reimbursement, those, those attempts failed. So um, at least for 2016, again, there was about $65,000 of outstanding loans that were written off. Okay. Supervisor Brammer. Thank you. Can Maybe this isn't a question for you, but can you detail what the attempts at reimbursement are, and are we ever going after the collateral or placing liens on people's property? Collateral is usually we try to take a first or second mortgage, uh, first or second lien on any equipment, business assets. There's a process where if an applicant falls behind, say, 30 days, a letter would go out to them, 90 days phone call, another letter. Um, after that, we just turn it over to our collection attorney. And usually we'll, we'll obtain a, a judgment against that person. So the, the question that I would have then, uh, 60, just off the top of my head, not, not knowing a, a ton about this, uh, uh, in relationship to the amount of money outstanding and loaned uh, $65,000 on first blush seems like a reasonable number. I, I think it's very reasonable given the type of loan that we look at. And, that, and, that's, and, and that would be against an outstanding loan portfolio of? Approximately $2.8 million, $2 million at the end of 2016. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so your 2016 Marvin Report audit states Loan receivable net uh, of allowances for loan losses of 488,000 and 532,000 respectively for 2015 and 16. Um, and loans receivable which are considered collectible and still accruing uh, finance charges are 1,800,000. So that's a million short of what you're saying. Uh, amounts not accruing interest because management has determined that collection of the interest is doubtful totaled 1,062,000 as of December 31st, 2016. So would you please explain that to me? Sure. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I ask that all the microphones be held towards people so that all the voices will be recorded. Okay. Great. <coughs> okay. Um, the uh, the $2.8 million that I referenced, that is a total of loans that are accruing interest of the 1.8, and then loans that are not accruing interest of like the million 62. So that's how you get to the 2.8 number that I was referring to. Um, as far as your other question relating to the um, allowance for doubtful accounts, that's like at, at the end of 2016 is about $488,000. What that represents is management estimate of potential future losses on the loans. 
right now they don't feel that they're at risk of not being able to collect it, but um, accounting principles require that you know organizations set up some kind of allowance for potential future issues. So what management does is on an annual basis they review their loan portfolio and determine how much should be that they consider a potential loss on um, a future loss. Um, so sixty-five thousand written off. Yep. Million sixty-two thousand potentially future loss. Is that what you're saying? Potentially, yes. Okay, so a million sixty-two thousand of two point eight million is thirty-seven percent. So you're basically saying we only wrote off sixty-five thousand. We have a a potential to write off another million sixty-two thousand, which would constitute thirty-seven percent of this current portfolio. Is that correct when I say that, Walter? Is that correct when I say that? I'm going to defer. Well, he deferred to you. You defer back. So who I'm deferring to who? Well, how, how did you get to how did you get to a million? How did you arrive at a million sixty-two to enable you to come to a conclusion that some of these loans may indeed be fall into the category of questionable, which leads one to a thirty-seven percent default rate? How, what what's the criteria and the thought process that that you as a CPA kind of went well, through? Uh, we do not make that decision. Again, that's from Walt and his loan committee upon their evaluation. So I can defer that to Walt as far as explaining their process, as far as how they make the decision, as far as which loans, you know, uh, you know, will no longer be accruing interest. Now, if, if someone is not delinquent, has always been consistent in terms of payment, uh, they would not fall into that category, would they? Of, of questionable, maybe uh, that, that enables us, enables us to get to 37 percent. Again, I'm trying to understand yep. how how you, as a committee, Walter, kind of you know came to the conclusion that that these loans are in some way, shape, or fashion, I guess, to, to use a word, questionable. Um, it's, it's based on a number of factors. One is their past history performance. Uh, one would be the value of the collateral, whether it be uh, first, second, third uh, equipment, uh, and pretty much, you know, their their ability, looking back at their historical ability to make frequent payments. If, if someone was never late on a payment, would they fall into that category? No. No. Okay. Um, uh, so, oh, go ahead, Bud, Doug, and then uh, Mike Wild. Yeah. Okay. So um, you told us on two occasions the loan committee is totally autonomous. So they and they alone make the determination whether a loan is should go into default or not through a process. And process being, uh, maybe you're not getting the payments on time. Maybe you now suspect that the uh, that the collateral now is not as strong as you once once thought, um, and so that that they being the quote loan committee, and 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 let me state that the, I've read the bylaws. The loan committee says there's supposed to be ten members, two from each county, one being an official from each county. You've stated there's only six members of a ten, supposedly ten member loan committee. That in itself is disturbing to me. Uh, that the loan committee is not following their own guidelines, their own set up bylaws that I've, I've read. Um, but that will be a discussion in a few minutes down the road. So this loan committee then, that you said is totally autonomous, you don't make the calls on them, you tell me, you told us twice, they determine who gets a loan, who goes in default, who does everything. Those six people then determine and get with the marketing company and say, okay, we have 65,000 that we're wiping off for, for 2016. There's a million 62,000 that we are not going to accrue any interest charges because we feel they are on the track to going into default also, just maybe in 2017, or and or they don't have the collateral now that we thought they had. Um, and and so you're totally you're not involved with any of that, Walter. Is that correct, or are you involved with that? There's an annual uh, evaluation process that SEFCO puts together for us. Uh, do you have that criteria? 
where we can actually determine, you know, fair, medium. As he's coming up, I just want to clarify. So, are you is the loan committee totally autonomous or isn't it, Walter? I I'm still confused a second that because I see interaction with you and the loan committee, but you've told us twice that they're totally autonomous. So, are they or are they not? They are. They are. And so, and, and I'll let this individual talk. And I don't want to filibuster, but I spent seven hours going through the two loans you supplied us in the last two days. So I'm fairly educated now on some of the process, not all of it. But um, uh, uh, you send a letter on one loan advocating that the loan be approved. And if they're totally autonomous, why would the executive director send a letter to the loan committee asking it to be approved? I thought you just said that you have nothing to do with them. They're totally autonomous, yet you're advocating for certain loans. So that, that's disturbing. But let's, let's allow this individual to talk. Thank you, sir. Sir, would you be kind enough to identify yourself in the public record? My name is Rob Bondi, and I'm from Sefco CPAs. And we do the quarterly work for Walter, the accounting for the organization. Thank you. Um, I believe Walter asked the question of going through each loan, loan by loan, and we look at the current balance outstanding, and there are columns set up for the allowance that we go through that lists the collateral. If it's, I, I think we have fair, uh, average, and good, and then the likelihood of default, which is provided by Walter, low, medium, or high. And we go through that, and we determine an amount for each loan, and Walter signs off on the amount for each of those loans. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Wild. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Young, and, and I think you're the best one to ask this question. Um, previously, there was a discussion about um, the 60-day, 90-day letters that get sent out, and then after that, then it goes to collection. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take for the collection process to decide whether or not you want to write off that specific loan? And how many are in that current state? For the collection process from the beginning to the end, it could be up to a year, year and a half. And is that that 1.6 million that we're talking about here? Uh, part of it is, yes. Part of it is? Yes. So there's even more? Oh, no. That's part of that is into collection now. So through the, uh, the collection process could take a year before you write something off. Yes. So in essence, there could be still 1.6 million or whatever the number was. So it's going to be eventually written off. I, again, I'll go back to, you know, when we started this whole program back in 87, and there were 246 loans made for slightly over $16 million, and it was 775,000 written off, so it's about 4.85% in loan losses. Um, I, 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 I'd like to say I think a lot of these loans have been very good, Walter. I really think you've done a lot of help for a lot of businesses. I also think that some of them may be tainted. Um, Mr. Sefco, uh, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Rob. Rob, I, I should have written that down, Rob. I always do, and I, Rob, thanks, Rob. Um, I, I happen to have a document here from, from your organization. You said, we did not order to review the financial statements, nor were we, were we required to perform any procedures to verify the accuracy or completeness of the information provided by management. Accordingly, we do not express an opinion, a conclusion, nor provide any form of assurance on these financial statements. That is correct. Okay, so I got the impression that you checked a lot of these things, okay, which you did, sir, and then, but then you have a huge disclaimer saying, hey, by the way, I don't know if the numbers are accurate, I don't, I'm not saying they are, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to write my name down as, as the accuracy. So it's almost like I get the impression like, uh, it's meaningless. <laughs> That's what I can concur when, 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 when you have a statement like that, when on one hand you're saying, well, we checked this and we, and, 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 on, and then you make a statement that we're not accountable for any of the numbers supplied, any of the financials supplied. So how would you answer that? How would you rectify that in my mind for me? Sir, are you familiar with compilation engagements? No, Accounting? No. At all? Okay. 
So as, as part of our process that we do for uh, the Lake George Lake Champlain Regional Planning Board, we compile the information that is provided by management into financial statements. That is what you're, the report that you're referring to is. It's a compilation report. We do not provide an audit. We're not engaged to perform an audit. So you're just regurgitating back the numbers that you were supplied, correct? Correct. Okay. That's so you don't know if they're accurate. You could, you'd have no clue whether anything's accurate. You're just taking those numbers, re, reshuffling them, sending them back out. The compilation engagement puts them into a financial statement format. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll have some other questions, Mr. Chairman, and met by one other people have their opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just for clarity, so quite simply, there is no audit. Yes, there is an audit. That, that's Margaret. Would, would someone like to respond to that? Thing? Yeah. Um, audit been performed every year since we've been in existence. Um, there are different levels of, of uh, assurance services that can be provided. Rob and his firm assist Walt in doing their internal accounting process. And that process uh, creates what they call a compiled financial statement. As Rob said, um, they are providing like accounting services and they are not independent. So that's why they, you know, issue a compilation report. Marvin and his company has been engaged to audit the financial statements. So what an audit entails is getting an understanding of their internal controls over how they process transactions. That understanding helps us to provide and plan our audit, but we do not give a specific opinion upon the effectiveness of those internal controls. But what the internal controls do is it helps us understand how they do their transactions. So as part of our audit process, we go through and we look at the new loans that have been issued. You know, we have like, okay, geez, is there like the loan application? Is the approval, you know, was the loan dispersed? So on and so forth. So that's how we're getting, we're auditing the loan activity. <coughs> then we also obtain reports from the um, loan servicing company, which is a local bank. And again, we're looking at that, tying that report back to the records that they have on um, their financial statements, their financial records. So we are that, and then we go in and we do review their calculation of the loan allowances. So just to see that, is there a thought process behind that process? Do the calculations seem to make sense? And then we do make inquiries of Walt as far as how did you come about determining, you know, the um, quality of the, the um, collateral, high, medium, and low, and so on and so forth. Just to go ahead, Claudia. On, on that aspect, um, I think Rob mentioned meeting with Walt about the high, medium, low. Does the loan advisory, uh, uh, sorry, what is it called? Yeah, loan advisory committee. Is that the name of the loan committee? Walter? Do they, do they want? Do they meet to determine the high, medium, and low? No, it's just Rob and myself. Just the two of you, okay. okay. And are you on the loan committee? No. You're, you're not on the loan committee? I, Is no, it I have no. still 10 members, or have I haven't had a chance to review all we're, the bylaw amendments? We're at six now. Has that been amended through your bylaws to put it at six? It, it starts from uh, when we had the 10 members, and then you would have a couple drop out, and then someone else would volunteer to you know, step in. As long as we had a qualified number of people who had a varied interest in the in the region, you know, good representation from the financial community, uh, legal community, uh, banking, uh, and other, you know, at-large in individuals, that's how we... I think you work. told us at the Washington County meeting, but can you just give us the names of those six members again? Sure. Um, Harrison Sangster, uh, Tori Riley, Lou Tessier, Harry Booth, John LaPointe. How many am I up to? You have five. Oh, Peter, Peter Marshall. And have you provided us the minutes of those meetings? I'm not sure if that made it onto the list of documents. It, it is on the list of documents. 
the minutes from the loan committee did we get those yet we haven't received any minutes yet okay those were part of the uh there was a part of the information request that the regional planning board's working on okay thanks do you know when we'll get those uh are you, are you talking about the five or six sorry are you talking about the five or six spoil requests that just came in I'm talking about the letter that was sent uh, on behalf of the five counties by the Washington County Attorney. I didn't. I didn't. Maybe the Washington County Administrator, I think, has a copy. Oh. Was that also emailed, Chris? Um, I would have to double check with the attorney on that. I know it was sent via registered mail. Uh, an electronic copy may not have been. Okay. Thank you. Walter, just a, a quick. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Sure. Walter, this uh, this loan portfolio report that I that I just saw a, a couple of moments ago, mm -hmm. um, um, the talks about an outstanding balance, and then it says last payment. Okay. Yes. Uh, there are. <coughs> 53 loans listed on these three pages. Again, being a casual observer to and not being a math major, I, I it looks like seven of those loans uh, appear to be in trouble in terms of the last payment received by your organization. Right. I could go through those now if you like. Okay, why don't you? Yeah. Uh, Jay's heating. Uh, has been making periodic payments. They uh, still date back to uh, or 2017. But they're making periodic payments uh, of about $1,000 a month for their loan. Uh, All Brands Redemption is on an interest-only account. There was a uh, family disaster and the owner asked me if it was okay to just okay. go on an interest-only basis for okay. a while. Uh, Lake George Forum Cafe, that's pretty much, I think, going to be a, a write-out. We're still a write-off. We're still receiving some money through the bankruptcy court okay. on that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Thompson's second page, third from the bottom, Thompson's Garage. We're still uh, receiving uh, money through a foreclosure sale on his equipment at the garage in Lake George, so that's not totally okay. written off. Mm -hmm. Can I take it to date on that? Should be 17, not 18, 11, 9, 17? Yes. About brand redemption. <coughs> that, that's the one I was talking about. Okay two grand redemptions that would get an interest only status for a while. They had that in the history. Uh, fat food kids were still in the process of receiving some uh, collateral from them, some equipment from them that they pledged as part of their loan. And Cooper Logging is in the process of selling his property, which we have as collateral, which will more than cover the, uh, the loan, and that should be made current within six months. Okay. Again, not a math major, but my gut conclusion is uh, assuming the accuracy of these numbers, and then of course they're accurate, uh, um, you have uh, 57 on the list, and it appears as if seven are in trouble. Okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman, yes, come up about 458,000 roughly. In terms of? Uh, okay. Uh, so that's a different number than the uh, what was the number that was uh, bantied about earlier. So uh, it was well, 65 were in default. A million 62 was uh, uh, in a non-interest bearing position, and 458,000 are now on the trail of default. Is that correct, Craig? Well, just on the one that are behind. Yeah. They're, be they're behind. Yeah. 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 Supervisor Hogan. Clarity on a statement that you just made. You were talking about the All Brands one. Yes. And you said that you called and asked you to go to an interest only. Is if it, if it was okay to go interest only. Yes. He had it. on the loan committee. 
See, this is where I'm getting confused. The loan committee has total autonomy. They, they grant the loans, they determine the loans, they put the loans in default. Yet you and Rob are the ones who determine the grading system and you determine whether you change the rules for a certain business. This, we, I no, can't we, we weren't the same for all the businesses. Our, our goal is to keep these people going no matter how long it takes. They go out of business, doesn't do us any good. No, I, I understand that, Walter, but I... We, we with, have with, the flexibility to be able to work with these people as needed. So you... They're very, you there's a lot of them that are seasonal businesses that ca their cash flows are high in the summertime, low in the winter. And I... At the end of the, yeah. the whole process. And I respect that, but you, every, but you tell me you don't have anything to do with the loan committee, and then you, and then you tell me... Then you tell us just a few minutes ago that you're the one determining whether you restructure a loan or, re, you know, then we, you, you can't be totally autonomous and have nothing to do with it, and yet then you're the one, you and Rob determine the grading system, and then you determine if you want to help another business, which I don't have a problem with helping businesses survive. That's not the issue. The issue is you're talking about out both sides of your mouth to me. I, th th this is... Do you have loan account, is, is the loan committee autonomous? Or, or do you do have some control over it and input? The loan committee makes all the decisions regarding the review of the loans and the approval of the loans. And yet you just said five minutes ago that you do the grading along with Rob, you do the grading of fair, medium, or high, and also when I spent my seven hours reading through the two loans uh, uh, the last two days, um, you sent a letter out to the loan committee advocating a loan be approved. Well, if they're totally autonomous and they, they and they alone should be making the decision, why would you be opining on that? I don't recall that. Well, I, I, I saw it. I, I got, it's in the loan portfolio you sent. I read it. Um, uh, and so that's what is very disturbing to me. I can't get clarity on what your job is, what you do, what you don't do. You say one thing, they, they run the show, they determine the loans, they have everything to do with the loans, I don't. And then you and Rob determine the grading system, and then you, you determine whether a business comes and says, hey, I need a little help here, Walter, can I get a little extension? Okay, you got it. Well, uh, doesn't the loan committee determine that? I've, I've seen some hands up, uh, yeah. Supervisor Strau, and then back to Ms. Bramer, and then maybe we could open it up to the, the supervisors that are not on the committee. Go ahead, Supervisor Stroud. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's the, I'm, I'm reading a uh, MOA here, a Memorandum of Agreement with Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board and Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Development Corporation. And some of the loans, at least, go through the corporation. And then the Memorandum of Agreement is for the uh, Regional Planning Board to provide the services of administering the loan. Regardless of subcommittee or not, it is the job of the Regional Planning Board. So some of the confusion here may be uh, a lack of understanding of the structure and the setup of this entity. So I almost want to go backwards and see, okay, what is the structure of this entity so that we all understand rather than make accusations back and forth I, I just like something more fundamental and if something like that could be shared for us at the okay. this meeting that would be appreciated <laughs> thank you supervisor bramer well along those lines i i am concerned that walter is out there making decisions about whether a loan can go to interest only payments i i also feel uncomfortable with the loan committee making decisions because we've learned they have no oversight from the actual board who we appoint members to. You know, there's the whole issue of people going and not going, and but it turns out it doesn't even matter because the loan committee is not taking any of their recommendations to the full board for final approval. They're just volunteers making the decision on their own, and it turns out there's a whole separate corporation making decisions too. This just seems like a lot of redundancy and things that we don't even, we have no ability to monitor because they're not bringing those decisions to the full board of the regional planning board to make. 
Supervisor Dickinson, your hand's been waving back and forth, and I apologize, okay? Uh, you're, you're next if you, and then Supervisor Driscoll, and then we'll come back to Supervisor Are we Dickinson. done with the committee questions? Uh, uh, for a moment Chairman? we are. We're going to come back. Yeah. So we're going to break that protocol, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can I mention this one? Uh, go ahead, Walter, yes. We have a um, you know, revolving loan fund management plan. It states that the revolving loan fund committee and or director will work with all loan recipients to ensure that timely payments are made on a discretionary basis. A note may be restructured and partial payments permitted, including interest-only payments for a specified period of time. Supervisor Dickinson. Can you speak a little louder, Supervisor Dickens? Yeah, Could you come yeah, the yeah. So we can be recorded. <coughs> uh, I'm just looking at your portfolio. Uh, it would be interesting to know that, that what they give you is very little. It doesn't give you any insight into the loan. It would be interesting to know when those loans were issued so you know how current they are. I mean, if they're issued last year and they made a payment in 18 and they're current. They were issued in 2014 and they made a payment in 18, but the balance is almost the same as the money they borrowed and obviously they have, they're having trouble. Uh, the other thing is I was curious, uh, Thompson's Garage has two loans here. Uh, one was 60000 they paid over half of it off and he said they're in foreclosure for the balance, but he's got a loan up in the top, 145000 They've made like $1,400. I think it would be uh, g good for the rest of us if we had that information so we have a better insight. Yeah, in how and, I, and, I, and I agree with that, Supervisor Dickinson. Just I'm honing in on information that I just received in the last five minutes and trying to, Me too. to Thank you. try to come to grips. That's a good observation, and I think uh, Thompson's would be uh, uh, a, a question for, for Walter or for his committee to uh, put some... Uh, Does anyone have an answer on Thompson's Garage? Walter, do you have an answer on Thompson's Garage? As far as what? I, we, we have two. You're showing two loans for Thompson's Garage, yes. one, one for 131887 and there's another one, a smaller one. 40000 Yeah, so, so I, I guess the question would be, why are there two notations for Thompson's Garage? Uh, are they indeed in foreclosure? Uh, and what what do you think is? Uh, there, there were two separate loans made to Thompson's Garage, and they are in foreclosure. Okay, is that is, is that typical to give someone two separate loans? Would you say? It's been done in the past. Done. If they can demonstrate the need for it. Yes. Okay. Go, no, go ahead. Go, Doug, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the loan committee, the Development Loan Corporation, they have specific requirements. I'm going to read them to you. Submission of a completed RLF application. That's revolving loan fund application. Number two, you have to submit a business plan. Number three, you have to submit personal financial statement. Number four, you have to supply historical income data and financial projections. Number five, you have to supply tax returns. Number six, you have to supply a credit report. And number seven, you have to supply a bank or financial institution of a, of a de, uh, that you were declined the loan. So you supplied two loans to this, uh, to this board uh, two days ago, of which I sat down and, and painstakingly went through these two loans for this one, one, one uh, business. The loan committee did not even follow their loan requirements in a number of cases. Now, I find that very, very disturbing. Yet, they were approved. This one business was approved two times for loans. And so, if the loan committee, which is supposed to be 10, but only has six, is supposed to have a official from each county, but has only one, Mr. LaPointe, uh, who in this case actually uh, recused himself, which I applaud, um, but if their own loan committee, your own loan committee doesn't have enough members or doesn't have the full allotment of members, doesn't follow their own loan requirements, I find that very troubling. 
to you, Mr. Young, find that troubling? No. Every one of the loans goes through the same vetting process. Like you said, they have to look at the revolving loan fund application, personal financials, tax returns, credit reports, uh, any other documentation. If they, it's, a lot of them are small mom and pop operations. They don't have a formal business plan. Okay, so it's, you're saying then that the loan committee does not have to follow their own loan requirements? No, I didn't say that. Well, you're saying if it's a small business, they don't have to have a business plan. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not here to argue with you, sir. I'm just here to say, how can you give a loan to someone who can't even put a business plan together or even the substance of a business plan? In both cases that I read through, they were both missing a business plan. Now, to me, that's a basic of information needed. If you're going to hand money, thousands and thousands of public money, I would think. Now, the other thing was uh, it says it's supposed to be economic growth. You're supposed to, the objective is to add jobs. In both cases, in this particular one uh, that I reviewed, there was no jobs added. Um, it doesn't have to be. It can be. No, I, I didn't say it was a definite. It, it, that's one of the objectives, though, of the government money, of the agriculture and the Commerce Department. Yeah. One of the objectives is hopefully economic development and creating new positions or additional jobs. Is that correct? Or retaining what's there. Okay. And in this particular two loans that you supplied, uh, it was a one-person operation, uh, and uh, there was no additional jobs created, yet we given this uh, individual business a second loan uh, with no, with no um, business plan, with uh, financial information that is sketchy uh, at best. I'm not an auditor, but I would think an auditor who went through that would, would find very uh, less than uh, fulfilling. Um, and so I guess what I'm saying is then you agree the loan development loan committee does not have to follow their own loan requirements, does not have to have 10 people, does not have they don't have to have a government employee from each county. So is that correct? You know what I'm saying? The information that's in each loan's recipient's packet is substantive enough for the committee to be able to make a decision that it's either a good loan or a bad loan. But they don't have to follow their own loan requirements. They do. Well, they're not, sir. I, I, I beg to differ with all due respect. I spent seven hours going through, and they have not. And I could sit down and show you. I'd be glad to. I would um, so they, they don't have to follow their own requirements, and that's disturbing to me. Okay, I think your point is well taken, Thank Doug. Uh, we're going to go to Supervisor Bramer, and then with Supervisor Beatty's permission, I'm going to go to Supervisor Driscoll. So uh, You have it, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. I have, a, I have a couple questions. Go ahead. Walter, what is your budget for advertising the availability of your loan fund? Um, it's done primarily through our website and through area lending institutions and other local, we have tie-ins with other local development corporations, EDCs. What are the, so that's a great lead into my question, what are the stumbling blocks for the loans that you administer to be administered instead by the local development corporations and EDCs? I'm not quite sure what you're what you're asking. Are there stumbling blocks or reasons that an LDC or an EDC could not administer the funds that you are administering through the Regional Planning Board? No, most of the referrals we get from EDCs are either projects that they're not comfortable doing or uh, there's not enough money in their particular pot to um, do the loan at that time. So project's too risky or they don't have enough money, but there's really no um, procedural reason why they couldn't be if they were willing to take on a risky project, let's say. I, that's a legal question. I, okay. okay. Supervisor Driscoll, and then we'll open it up to anyone else on the floor. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to be clear on, on the process. Um, originally, there were 12, 10 members of the committee. Now there's down to six. Uh, uh, any organization that I've ever been affiliated with needs to have a quorum in order to make decisions. And I'm just interested in, in the process of, of how decisions are made. I, I know two of the individuals 
that were mentioned. One's a CPA, the other is a, um, uh, has a, a background in economic development, former um, CEO of the Adirondack Regional Chamber of Commerce. So uh, I, uh, I'm confident that the individuals who serve on the committee are, are uh, bright uh, men and women. Uh, but I'm, I'm interested in, in the process as far as uh, how often all of those people meet uh, when they make their decisions. Thanks. Thank you. Um, they, uh, the committee meets on an on-call basis, uh, usually about 30 days after uh, an application is received. But in order to in order to make a decision, you have to have a quorum. I think if you have six people, four, you have four. to have four people. Okay. That's not legal. That's not legal. That's not legal. You can't. You, that's not legal. Uh, why don't we start? Uh, maybe starting with uh, Supervisor uh, O'Brien. Uh, do you have a question, or maybe just go down the go down the route? Go ahead. I actually do. Um, I think it's good to focus on the past, but I think more importantly is uh, we need to focus on the future. I think a lot of these issues are good issues, but need to be resolved. But I'd like to know, Walter, when is the next meeting of the Regional Planning Board? According to your bylaws, it's required to have a meeting the second Wednesday of every month. Is that still true? No, that was amended. It's the next meeting will be coming up in May. Okay. When you know when in May? No. Not yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Can I go ahead? Yes. Just real quick. Yeah. I think I asked you before if the bylaws were amended to change the number of people in the loan committee from ten. Did that happen? No. So. Per the bylaws, it's still supposed to be 10. It's just not all of those positions are not full. So a quorum is really six. You must have all six there. No, there's six members now. Four would constitute a quorum. You need a, a quorum. Maybe the county attorney can fill in. Sure. Their bylaws actually state that a quorum for them is the number of voting members there. Right. So by their bylaws they are actually they do have a quorum okay thank you supervisor thank you we focused quite a lot on the the loan committee which actually seems like an ancillary part of the planning board could you give us a, a one paragraph review of what the planning board itself does the the initial intent was to obtain uh, federal and state grants to help communities in the region uh, with economic and community development. Walter, can you speak into the microphone? Yeah, sorry, please speak in. There's, um, I guess you'd call it, two other legs of the planning board. One is uh, a girl who works on water quality state grants with DEC in the New York State Department of State. And then there's the uh, Adirondack Funds Falls Transportation Council, which we act as host agency for. Are there any impediments to the water quality state grants with DEC being administered by Warren County Soil and Water? Again, that's a legal issue. They have, there's a state, you know, Beth has a, uh, an ongoing annual state grant with them. And I know there are concerns about the Adirondack Lens Falls uh, Transportation Council. You know, Mr. Frank himself wants to speak to that. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I understand there are concerns there, and we need to be careful about what happens with their host agents. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, we'll break the order. Good morning, everybody. I don't have any prepared remarks. I'm no. not here oh. to ask oh. any questions of Walter, but if there are any questions to me regarding the relationship of the Transportation Council to the Regional Planning Board, I'm happy to entertain those. Is there a relationship? Uh, we are hosted administratively by the Regional Planning Board. Uh, by virtue of establishment by the governor of MPOs in New York State, we are not freestanding legal entities. We require a host agency to first instance our funding in advance of state and federal reimbursement. We require that host agency to enter into contractual agreements on our behalf. For instance, I 
can't even buy Adobe software right now because I'm having a hard time establishing a, a freestanding account. Um, but I, I need an entity to act on the MPO's behalf to sign leases, enter into contracts with utility companies and th those types of things. So again, that's done in advance of initial reimbursement by State Department of Transportation and ultimately State Department of Transportation is reimbursed either by the Federal Highway Administration or the Federal Transit Administration. Don't, don't your employees have some sort of relationship with Warren County already, though? We are the... Aside from the... The personnel that is administered, again, on our behalf by the Planning Board. We are currently enrolled, or our checks originate from the Treasurer's Office. Here? Here, in Warren yeah. County. So that's done, I believe, as a service to the Planning Board. And again, our, our, our paychecks and benefit costs, those are, again, 100% reimbursed. Those are not at a direct municipal cost to the county. Are there impediments to um, Warren County being your host agency? A county hosting aid mechanism is not unusual. Um, there are 14 MPOs within New York State. I believe seven are hosted by counties, if I'm not mistaken. Um, most of those are single county entities. A, a potential complication here is that we are multi multiple county. We are responsible for the entirety of Warren, Washington, and a portion of Saratoga County. Um, we have a host agency agreement in place between the New York State Department of Transportation that was signed by the Commissioner of Transportation and uh, the Regional Planning Board. So that host agency was signed in 2012 for a duration of 10 years. So the current host agency agreement, again, between the Department of Transportation and the Regional Planning Board is in effect until 2022. And as I understand, is not transferable without the consent of the Department of Transportation. So if you're looking, if you're asking if there's an impediment. That there, would be an impediment. <laughs> <laughs> I would qualify that as impediment. I believe an email that I sent around to the county appointed supervisors that are currently on my board, I had indicated to them that I have been through this host agency designation process before and it is lengthy. It can take some time. Uh, my concern in sending that email around was that if there is a considerable amount of time where s Transportation Council staff is unable to function. I would very much encourage that we look to an, a different hosting mechanism should that become necessary. Um, I don't think the region wants to be without the benefits of having the MPL yeah. for a considerable amount of time. More selfishly, I like paychecks. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, Ryan is going to pass out a, a packet uh, to anyone that chooses to have. Thank you. Uh, uh, it is all of the information that uh, we have received uh, to date uh, from, uh, uh, from, from Walter. So, so at your leisure, uh, Dana, go for it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we, before we get to Dana, I did have a follow, uh, question for Aaron. Um, if you can make it a quick one, please. Yeah. Um, so, Aaron, we all know the good work that your group does. I don't think we want any interruption with that. Uh, but you're saying the one impediment is the Department of Transportation has to approve a new host, correct? That's that's my read of the host agency agreement. Again, it's not a contract that Transportation Council staff directly entered into. It's signed between the department and the host agency. But my, my quick read of it yesterday was that it's non-transferable without their consent. Without their consent. Um, they, everybody was, everybody meaning the other MPOs in New York State were all put <coughs> on the same 10-year host cycle right. in 2012 because I, administratively, I don't think they like to do the host agency contracts if they don't want to. But, um, but if they that, have to, they <coughs> I believe so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I just want clarification. Good morning, my name is Dana Half, and is from the town of Hartford, which everyone here knows is in the heart of Washington County. Um, first of all, I have a, um, a question about the aging loan report. If you add up, and Krista Bolt did this math, if you add up the loans that are over 90 days, it's $820,000, questionable. The audit by Marvin and company stated that there is $1,062,000 questionable. So there's a difference in here of $240,000. As to Supervisor Dickinson's comment, 
it would be helpful to see on this when the loan began, when it is due to expire, because on here, if you take any of these companies and say they haven't made a payment in three years, but someone called them and said, you know, there's some heat coming down, please make a payment, and they made a payment, it would show up on here as last payment made March 18th, 2018, and doesn't accurately reflect that $1,062,000 questionable. So this is interesting, but it needs a lot more information because I don't think it gives the, the full picture. I gave some documents to your county attorney. I'm sorry I didn't make more copies, but my printer this morning ran out of ink. As to the comment about um, that um, Supervisor Bramer had about the um, Loan Administration Committee, their bylaws and quorums, those members present can only make another meeting if there's not a quorum. They say, okay, we don't have a quorum. Let's make a meeting next week so that we get quorum. And I'm going to read you the section here. Quorum. A quorum shall consist of a majority of the total number of members entitled to vote, which is 10, right? Either in person or by proxy. No action shall be taken in the absence of a quorum except those members present shall be entitled to call a special meeting at a subsequent date. So if the committee is 10, quorum is 6, in the one case of where Mr. LaPointe recused himself, you no longer have a quorum. Did they do business? I'm sure they did. Okay. Now, my interest specifically at this moment is how are these meetings held? How is quorum established? Who votes? Because if you don't have quorum, all business done is not actually done. So, and when, you, when these handouts come to you, you can see what I'm talking about. The first one I have are the minutes of the December 2017 Regional Planning Board. Now, ex officio members cannot vote. The Regional Planning Board is made of 30 people. Three from each county who are appointed, those vote. There's also three from each county who are ex officio, the county chairman, the treasurer, the highway DPW person. So only 15 can vote those that are appointed. But yet in the minutes, you see repeatedly ex officios voting. Motion made by Mike Diskin. Another one, motion made by Mike Diskin. Motion by Beth Hunt, who's the treasurer of Hamilton County. Motion by Mike Diskin, treasurer of Essex County. Motion by Beth Hunt. Motion by Beth Diskin, seconded by Al Nolet. All these motions were made by an ex officio who cannot vote. And then the last one, motion made by Mike Diskin, Essex County Treasurer, seconded by Al Nolet, Washington County Treasurer, to approve the following blo block of audit. So all those audits, this is not proper. Okay, then in going through minutes, you find where proxies are submitted for the meeting. Mm -hmm. and, and this is just a sampling. This isn't everything that I found inappropriate. This is just a sampling because it's almost every meeting you can find this. Okay, so then I go and I find proxies of a meeting. This was an August 2015 meeting because the Regional Planning Board meets twice a year, August and December. Okay, so proxy, I hereby give permission for Ronald Conover to attend Lake Champlain meeting signed by Jeffrey Tennyson. Well, Mr. Tennyson is or was Warren County DPW superintendent. So here an ex officio who cannot vote is giving a proxy to, at that time, Mr. Conover was not chairman of the board, so I think he was an appointed person. So Mr. Conover can vote, but the ex officio giving the proxy cannot vote. Now, if you go to the Regional Planning Board website and you navigate off to the side, there's a button, Economic Development. You click on that button and it takes you to SEDS. We've heard that term before today. And SEDS is the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. So this is right off the Regional Planning Board. And in it, it lists 
who are appointed, who are ex officio. They can't even get it right. There are six people here that should be in the other column. So for example, appointed, men, appointed members who can vote, William Farabee, Chairman of Essex County, William Farber, Chairman of Hamilton County, Beth Hunt, Treasurer of Hamilton County, Kevin Garrity, Chairman Warren County. According to this, these were all appointed, but they're not, they're ex officio. And then under the ex officio list, you've got John Frey, Supervisor of Inlet. He should be a voter, not an ex officio. Christy Wilt, Tourism. She's not ex officio. It's, it's all messed up. Regional Planning Board lets everyone vote that attends there. And the bylaw says that voting shall be by those appointed in attendance by voice. Why are they giving proxies? Why are they giving proxies to the wrong people? I have a feeling that at a meeting, everyone there votes. Voting is by voice. All in favor of this motion, and it's a chorus. Aye. They need to have roll call voting so that they only roll call those appointed but then they need to figure out who is appointed because a lot of these are ex officio. Another one I passed out is there appears to be forgery done on proxies. Now, if you take, there's three sets of proxies here. Um, proxy given to Beth Hunt, I can't tell the signature, it's just a, a squiggle. If you're gonna have proxies in the future, it should also be print and sign your name. But for example, you take the very first one off the top, Beth Hunt. Tear these apart, hold them up to the light. You can see everything is exactly the same. The signature, everything is the same. So I would suspect the very first proxy from December 14, 2015 is prob probably proper. Then you go to the next one and they crudely kind of took a pencil and rewrote, made a 14 to 24, made the 15 to 16. You know, it's crudely done. You could say, all right, that was done for convenience. Or, well, if I was gonna do it, I would have crossed out the date, wrote a new date and initial it. That's how you're supposed to do it for transparency. But if this is done for convenience, how can you explain, if you look at the top of these documents, the fax machine date stamp? they whited out the date on the fax machine date stamp. It, all the information is the same, the original one, the date it was faxed, the time it was faxed, but the second one uh, that I think was crudely forged, they whited out the date stamp. You don't do that out of convenience. They're all done the same way. I think the same person did this. This isn't three different people thinking alike, doing proxies this way. This was all done by the by the same person. That's highly questionable. Why did they do this? Probably because they did not have quorum. You need this for quorum. Okay. Is this done after the fact? I don't know. Memorandum of understanding between the Regional Planning Board and the Development Corporation. This says in here, we've heard about how the loan committee has complete autonomy. Well, if you read their bylaws, they do because they appoint themselves. So if there's supposed to be 10 people on that loan review committee, but you only have six, you have to ask why. 10 people is very good because you have a broad range of different opinions. The more different opinions that come together, the better. You don't want to have a committee where it's all like-minded. So why is it not still 10? Maybe because the six they have is all like-minded and you don't want to upset the apple cart. Um, as far as the development corporation, now I know we get confused, we could talk about the regional planning board, the regional development corporation, the loan committee, we sometimes get all confused. But between the regional planning board and the regional development corporation, Mr. Young told us at the Washington County Committee that the regional development corporation was kind of born out of the regional planning board. So the hierarchy, you would think that the Regional Planning Board oversees the Regional Development Corporation, then which all of those are overseen by the county boards. But in this, it says the relationship, 
between the Regional Planning Board and the Development Corporation. It says the relationship of the Regional Planning Board to the corporation arising out of this agreement shall be that it is an independent contractor. So the Regional Planning Board is an independent contractor to the Development Corporation. I think this Development Corporation is a shell corporation because the Regional Planning Board does everything. They audit their bills, they administer the loans, they do everything. Um, I think the best thing to do is end this memorandum of agreement. If the Regional Planning Board, or excuse me, if the Development Corporation and the Loan Review Committee are all completely autonomous, cast them free. Wish them good luck and see how quickly they fold their tents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. I wrote down three words all the way from uh, Hartford, New York. Uh, three of your more elegant words. You said it's all messed up. Okay, so uh, I, I think you may be right. <laughs> uh, going down, Chris, do you have anything to, to add? Or? Okay. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Travis? Uh, uh, Wayne? Uh, Travis, go ahead. Yeah. Mentioned earlier, Travis White at Queensbury. Um, the chairman asked if uh, an aging report was provided as requested by our treasurer and by the committee. And um, in response, this loan portfolio was uh, handed out. Um, I asked our treasurer just now if he thought this was a aging report. Certainly, Mr. Supervisor Dickinson has pointed out some. Um, the fact that not even knowing when a, uh, a loan originated is certainly an issue. But we have several CPAs here, uh, and maybe we can take advantage of them. They've probably seen this loan portfolio thing. And can you, would you call that a, a loan aging report? I mean, that doesn't mean anything to me. Maybe to you too? Rob? That looks like a loan aging report. I'm not sure what the original question is. Loan aging report mean something to you? All right, just a point of order. Yes, go the ahead. public is supposed to address the chair. Not right. Yeah, she's correct. Thank you, Mary. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all I had to do. Thank, Thank you, you. Travis. Uh, Michael. And then uh, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a general comment to Mr. Young. Um, I, I have to say that there's a, a big concern about leadership and accountability. And it, to me, it appears as though um, the questions that are answered are answered uh, partially, not fully. And maybe it's because of the fact that um, we just don't have the information. But from a leadership standpoint, I would expect leaders such as yourself to be able to come in here and provide all this information. And the follow-up to that is I'd like to hear from you, maybe not right now, but before the meeting is over with, why this board would continue supporting you in the leadership position of the Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board. You want to respond, Doug, or Walter? You oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Doug. Yeah. Um, that's a great question, uh, Supervisor Wild. I, I think I asked that almost that same thing in the last uh, meeting uh, that we attended, uh, similar to that. But anyway, um, I like to, I, I'm a slow guy. I like to rehash things that don't make sense to me. It's would you say, would you say, Mr. Young, that it's the practice of the executive director of the Lake George Lake Champlain Regional Planning Board to advocate for or against a possible loan? It's, no, it's not to. It's not to, okay. And again, the documentation that you supplied in the loan uh, uh, for two loans that you supplied for me to look over had a clear letter on your behalf of advocating for a loan to the loan committee to be, uh, um, uh, and you said there was sufficient collateral, which uh, I, 
I, I question because I looked at all the financial data, uh, but you advocated that the loan committee approve that loan. So I, that sent up a red flag to me right away. Of the five responses from the loan committee to that particular loan, three of them said, now there's three answers. You can say, yes, I approve, no, I don't, or yes, I approve with conditions. Those are the three possible answers. You send a letter saying, hey, I advocate they should get a loan. The five people who were on that committee at the time who uh, gave their answer, three said, just check the box, said, yep, give them the loan. One person said, yes, but I have severe, or I have conditions. Uh, um, the numbers don't work out for me. Walter, can you redo the numbers? And then the third, or the fifth person said, no. There's no collateral here. So um, what's your take on that? How do you how do you perceive that? There was no collateral on the on the front. One of the one of the loan one of the loan uh, uh, um, individuals uh, committee members said no no loan no collateral. I, I believe it says no. It's a scribble, but she but the individual said no. I'm denying this. I don't see uh, something like I, no collateral. As long as we had the quorum that voted yes in favor of the project, then. Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes. Okay, and you don't remember sending in a letter advocating no. for that loan? No. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Dana, uh, Dana uh, asked for more complete information, Walter, as it related to the loan portfolio, which I, which I think uh, uh, is, is a good suggestion. And maybe in the, in the near future, uh, uh, I, I know you're busy, but if you could possibly you know, w w w the inception date of the loan, uh, maybe how, how, how many times a, a human being has been delinquent, and just so that you, we have a greater understanding of the, the, the general range of, of, of your de decision-making process in terms of uh, the loan portfolio that, that was given here. If, if you'd be kind enough to do that, I would uh, deeply appreciate it. Uh, Some, uh, this gentleman down here asked the question about why we should continue to support the regional plan go ahead board. yes please do yeah uh, each year uh, you folks have been kind enough to give us um, roughly seven thousand dollars toward our operating expenses and if you look at the sheet of projects that we send in to the uh, chairman of the board every fall you'll see there's multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants and loans that have been made throughout the years in Warren County, okay. all, o all over the county, okay. from the Queensbury Industrial Park to Tech Meadows to uh, okay. some of the work at Warren Washington Industrial Park. I mean, you get, you get what you're mm -hmm. more than. Okay, and I, and I can appreciate that, and believe it or not, and I know uh, Chairman Conover has said this uh, uh, on a couple of occasions that uh, uh, you, you may not believe this at this point in time, but you know these sessions are an opportunity to to really showcase your your organization and and the good things that you do uh, you know in in the five county area. So it, again, uh, today uh, may be somewhat painful, uh, and I understand that, but uh, but again, an opportunity to to let us know what you do. So, and again, I want to apologize to. Chairman Conover and Supervisor McDivitt and the rest of the board for the misunderstanding at the, the last Well, meeting. thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Did you have something else, uh, Supervisor Bramer? Yes, I did. Uh, I appreciate that apology. I was just about to bring that up because Supervisor Wild did not ask for why we should support the board. He asked why we should support you as the leader of the Regional Planning Board. I would like to, I gave everyone, all the supervisors in Warren County, a resolution, a draft resolution to dissolve the Regional Planning Board. This is something that I crafted from Washington County's resolution. They, they are, haven't yet um, put it on the floor of committee yet or their full board, but um, it was drafted by the treasurer, Mr. Nolet, and um, in collaboration with Supervisor Half. And from my perspective, uh, I do not see any um, obstacles that we cannot overcome as far as putting the water programs into Warren County Soil and Water or putting the Adirondack Glens Falls Regional Transportation Council 
into Warren County as the host agency. There's certainly some legwork that we need to do, but I think that the governor under his shared services program initiative would be willing to at least work with us and look at trying to bring this into our, our county's oversight directly instead of having the regional planning board be um, this intermediary host agency. So I, while I do support the eventual dissolution, I'm not going to move this particular resolution today. I think I'll do a little bit more legwork, but I think this is something that all of us should be seriously looking at and making sure that we have our steps in a row by the time uh, we look forward at giving any money any further money to the regional planning board. I thank you, Ms. Bramer. At the, at the end of the day, uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, at the end of the day, I, I uh, uh, credibility. Uh, the average person in the street needs to believe in the system. They need to believe in the credibility of government. So, so that's the point of this exercise. Okay, to reestablish in the hearts and the minds of uh, of the average dude that walks down the street in Warrensburg or Hartford that uh, that there are good people at the helm that that the government dollars are spent efficiently uh, and wisely and that we're all doing the right thing go ahead Chris yeah. um, I'm Chris DeBolt Washington County Administrator uh, to Mrs. Bramer's point um, I don't want this to come across like a custody battle but um, I want dibs on Aaron too, <laughs> and um, and so just a thought that occurred to me is um, since the AGF, AGFTC is a regional MPL, and they're physically located in Warren County, and again keeping with your comment about the governor's push for shared services, maybe we could work something out where we're the host agency um, administratively, but they're physically with you guys, and then we work together on it. Um, just a thought for everybody, but um, I like Aaron. I don't want to see him completely go. No, I do not want to do anything that jeopardizes their work or people's salaries, that's for sure. Um, we need to make sure that the Transportation Council is protected. Supervisor Thomas. Yes, uh, Warren County Soil and Water has been mentioned twice now. It's the taking over the, and it's the Lake Champlain Basin Program. And uh, I don't think uh, Warren County Soil and Water would have jurisdiction over the Lake Champlain Basin, which runs up to Plattsburgh. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure that that would work. Yes, Chris. Yeah. There is another organization out there. Um, I used to sit on it when I was the Washington County Planning Director. It's the Champlain Watershed Improvement Coalition of New York, uh, QUICNY for short. Um, they started of, as a loose coalition of the planning departments and soil and water districts in the Lake Champlain Basin. Maybe four or five years ago, uh, they got some grant funding. They had an executive director for a little while, um, and things kind of languished a little bit with some th staff turnover and they didn't um, replace that individual when he left to go elsewhere. Um, if Quickney, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but if Quickney is kind of still around and active, it would be a great footprint because it literally is the Lake Champlain Basin, so it, t it touches the five counties. Um, and you're right, that might be a more appropriate avenue to explore rather than a county soil and water because it would be the whole region. So that's something we could certainly look into. I uh, appreciate the discussion of the custody battle. I haven't felt this one in a long time, so <laughs> thank you. Um, I just want to note that we did revisit the host agency agreement in 2012 when the last 10-year agreement was signed with the Department of Transportation. And the primary advantage that we saw at the time in continuing to be hosted by the Regional Planning Board was that they were a multi-county organization and that there was not necessarily a perception of undue influence. Another advantage of the Regional Planning Board as a host is that they're, to us anyway, they're a non-competitive capital sponsor. So I'm not being administratively hosted by an organization that in turn is competing with other counties, other towns, other villages for capital projects like highway reconstructions or bridge replacements. So again, having a multi-county jurisdictional host agency does have its advantages, but again, there are other hosting agencies. I just have a quick question. Do you transport anyone in other than Warren County? We don't transport anyone. We're not an operational entity. Okay, but as far as, uh, do, do, do you actively participate as far as your organization in other counties other than Warren? You do? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. we're responsible for transportation planning as funded by the federal government for the entirety of Warren County, the entirety of Washington County, and the town of Moreau and the village right. of South Glens Falls and Saratoga County. Great. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mike, did you have one more? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, my question is, um, 
related to our to the auditors and it, it has to do with uh, what supervisor Beatty mentioned about uh, the lack of process uh, and possibly missing uh, if I'm if I'm correct the business plan or other paperwork and if, when I heard the auditor speak prior he mentioned that they go through a lot of things when they do the audit which to me was a process kind of related thing did they have the application the paperwork collateral and, and the like I'm curious would this be something that the audit would have picked up on? As far as the missing business plan, I'm, I'm not sure. If we're just looking for the overall final approval of the loan process. We may go through the documents provided to us, but we're not ensuring that the entire, you know, like completed loan package that may be stated in. Uh, the bylaws or the checkoff list had been completed. We're looking for the final approval. Yep, it seems like they went through their process, and you know, so the loan had been issued. It's on the books and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, I think we've hopefully uh, met met the end uh, this morning. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, attendance. I think it's been worthwhile. Uh, I think uh, we may very well do. Uh, uh, another one of these uh, and uh, I'm going to maybe uh, mutually talk with my peers and with Ryan and Mary and uh, figure out uh, maybe when we can do another one of these. So One final comment Mr. Chairman. Um, so the, the, in, the information that was sent from Washington County, that list of information we'd like uh, that was sent by registered mail, so that is something that hopefully Mr. Young will put together for all of this board as well as all the other counties. And once we're in, re once we have time to digest that, Mr. Chairman, that, that's why I would suggest you set a date okay. that we can reconvene mm -hmm. yeah. after we've yeah. had time to digest the information. Go so ahead, Ryan. Yes, yes the, the Washington County Attorney's Office has graciously uh, agreed to be the clearinghouse for all of this documentation. That's where uh, all documentation will go in the first instance and there will be a distribution out to uh, the other four counties, including Warren County. Um, Supervisor Beatty, can you do me a great favor and please adjourn this meeting? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, <laughs> it's, it's uh, with my pleasure that we, uh, I put out a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Great. Seconded by Supervisor Bramer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.